if Stephen A. Smith would want to come on and debate us on any topic, I would totally be okay with that, and I would welcome it with open arms, honestly. Yeah, I agree. I like, yeah, yeah, I feel that's pretty great. Uh, all right, let's let's roll. Let's roll. Hey, everybody, welcome to another episode of your favorite podcast. There is no current in podcasting. I am your host, Johnny Blackburn. And I'm Nick. Old old Nick Victor Nicholas Alessandro. Yeah, there we the go. Man. Full name. The you forgot name? the second though at the end. So. Oh, you're the second. I am the second. I thought you were like, you were like the fourth or fifth. No, so that's I'm just the second because I'm named after my grandfather. There's a bunch oh. of other victors. Okay, but their there's middle just name isn't Nick. Okay. Their, their limited name isn't Nicholas. There's so only one Nick. Gotcha. There's, yeah, there is only one or Nick. Two. Well, well he, your grandfather's he, middle name. He, he, Nicholas, but he went by Victor. Oh, okay. No. Anyways, uh, <laughs> so let's go on ahead and get to the episode because I don't think anybody gives a crap about our, our, our full name. Our, or our, our family tree. Our <laughs> the family history of the Alessandros. <laughs> this episode is going to be, is brought to you by the Alessandro genealogy <laughs> tree. And <laughs> we're joined here by Nick's ancestors. We have a medium <laughs> present to speak to the dead. Oh my and, God, uh, it's Gary. <laughs> it's Gary. <laughs> it's producer Gary. Producer Gary. <laughs> oh man! Uh, today's episode, we're going to go ahead and take a look into the mass corruption and scandals that are currently and in the past have plagued the sporting world uh, in all of the main uh, leagues, everywhere from uh, FIFA to the NBA to the NFL to United States Olympics, the gymnastics team, a bunch of stuff. Uh, but let's start out with uh, some recent news. Uh, uh, yeah, Nick, uh, you've been itching to talk about that. I am itching to talk about it because every time we have done this podcast, we have talked about the baseball season and it finally happened. We had a official release date for the baseball season. It's going to be July 24th, I believe. Uh, no, July 23rd, uh, starting with the Yankees and the Nationals. Wow. Um, it's going to be a great game. I'm excited to see it. Uh, the Yankees are going to win the World Series this year. Okay, um, what's that? Uh, I mean, they were already really, really, really good. And then, you know, um, they got better this uh, offseason. Well, uh, I'm sure. Who, who, did the, they, who did they get? With the signing of Cole. Um, Garrett Cole, oh, the right. star pitcher for my Houston Astros was taken Ooh. from us Ooh. Speaking of to scandals, the New York Yankees. They're still your Astros. Right. Yes, they'll right. forever be my Astros. <laughs> if you're not Astros. treating, you're not trying. If you're not treating, you're not trying. If you're not oh, wow. cheating, you're not trying. Okay. That's that the old <laughs> the old motto is what I heard before we started this podcast from, yeah. our, our from producer Gary, Gary actually. Had, had he knows all that. about that because he's a huge New England Patriots fan. He is a big Patriots fan. So uh, yeah. we'll get to that later. But yeah, the baseball season's coming back. I think it's going to be great. Fun. Um, I'm really what excited. With- okay. on, sir. Uh, I think it's going to be interesting because it's only 60 games. Uh, I did read that. Okay. As opposed to 162 games that Jeez. they normally play. So, I mean, you're pretty much almost cutting that in a third, you know. Right. And... That's a lot of missing games. Um, pitchers, I don't know, are they going to pitch them like they, they normally do? That's a question now because yeah. they haven't been playing. Um, and is, is the amount of time that they're going to rest, is it yeah. going to be a standard like a week or whatever, four days? Well, it's normally whatever, five days. Patient. There's normally five, five, days, okay. well, five games. So uh-huh. however long that takes, it's a five game rest. Uh, but but in cases like Verlander, uh, Garrett Cole, stuff like that, or these winning teams when the Astros are winning a lot, uh, Yankees, whoever it is, um, they'll rest starting pitchers longer if they can. Mm-hmm. It's just like basketball or any other sport, really. Sure, sure. But, so what are they what are they going to do with the what are they doing with the fans? Because I had read an article the other day that the the San Francisco Giants are currently offering. Uh, the cutouts of season ticket holders. Yeah, they're going to like they're trying to do weird stuff. 
They're going to put cutouts of people sitting. What's creepier? What would you rather have? Play a baseball game full of an empty, uh, just an empty stadium, or a stadium full of life-size <laughs> cutouts of real-life people you don't know, and they're just Dude, staring at you with no noise? And if if some uh, of the uh, <laughs> some of the ballparks don't have nets, they're just getting slammed by foul balls. Yeah, well, so like, if, if your cutout breaks, is the is the team going to that cost, or do you have yeah, to, like, you have to buy a new cutout? Like, yeah, like is there? Do they offer insurance coverage on this? Like, you yeah, know, there's well, questions. Yeah, no, like, you I think they're going to do exactly like that. South Korea, and we're just not going to have people in the stands. Okay, and that's <laughs> it's, it's, it's going to suck. Like, I hate that idea. I mean, I also hated the idea of not being able to slide into the catcher anymore or the player at second base during a double play. I also hate the idea of nets because it kind of gets rid of the foul. Like, I like being able to almost get hit by a 90-mile-an-hour fastball, you know, or a yeah. faster line drive. Right. I like the challenge of, you know, maybe I make it out of this ballpark or not alive. That, 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 that is, uh, that is uh, one of the only ways people that. go. Yeah. You know, that's I mean, I that's not true. Baseball food is the <laughs> best food out of any sport. Ah, I've never been to a live professional baseball game before, I, I will have to say. Jesus uh, not, Christ. Um, All right. Well, you need to so, come to Houston then. I mean, you know, invite you. You know, it's almost we like... We have a spare bedroom. You can come down and tell you. That'd be great. If you have free right, season see, tickets to a game, let's go. Yeah. I'm down. I'll yeah. totally go. We'll you see know? what I can do. Yeah. I, I can tell you that, yeah, definitely... Um, the, the food they serve at basketball, like the NBA stadiums, sucks. It's it's not very good. Yeah. Um, for the at least, it, you know, say, I've only been to I've been to a bunch of Spurs games, and then I went to a game at a I can't remember the arena that the uh, Wizards play at, but uh, I went to a oh, game what a is that? Years ago. I don't, I don't remember Verizon, the Verizon Center. Or no, well, no, 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 that's. So I just I looked up you know a quick you know best ballpark food. Uh huh. And I mean, this is this is what makes baseball at the park so different because mm -hmm. I'm on it's a list of 30 um, right. and 28 on the list is Chinese food at Oracle Park. Chinese really? food. What? Yeah. I mean, and that's that's in San Francisco. So it makes sure. sense. There's a lot of, you know, Asian cuisine in There's California. Out there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I mean, like that's just. I don't know. Donut Burger at Citizens Bank Park. That's where the Philadelphia Phillies play. I mean, there's a lot uh -huh. of like really cool things. I'm looking at a slider dog from Progressive Field that has uh, that's where the Cleveland Indians play. They it has Fruit Loops on top. That sounds disgusting. I'm not going <laughs> to. I'm that. just that legitimately. <laughs> <laughs> you like is it like some type of milk sauce? Hey man, that to make it milk on a hot dog. It's got that savory sweet. Have you ever had maple syrup in hot dogs? No, no, it's that really good. good. Okay, it's actually right, really good. good. But Fruit Loops, Fruit Loops, and meat. I just that doesn't sound appealing to me. I mean, <laughs> I mean just, it sounds I can like see that. explosive <laughs> diarrhea waiting to happen. I, I, just, I just I don't see it. But yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> but going back to what I was saying, yeah, it's gonna suck not having baseball fans. It is really gonna. It is really gonna suck. I mean, we've talked about it on the last two episodes how. It's just different. Like even seeing, I mean, MMA really is the only, one of the only yeah. sports going on right now. One of the major yeah. ones that's still going on, and it's just strange them fighting in the octagon or fighting the arena or the ring even for boxing. Um, and you're not there's no cheers, there's no announcer really. Like it's it's just two yeah. people, camera it's crew, weird. Their coaches. <laughs> it's strange. It's weird. It's very eerie. Um, golf so too. Golf, golf, too. Oh, that's right. I forgot golf was going down right now. Yeah, okay. golf is weird. I mean, not many people watch golf, I don't think. I do. Um, I and it's weird. people watch golf. Yeah, I mean, I I think more people watch bowling than golf. No, that's not true. Bowling? <laughs> I don't think that's happening at all. <laughs> I mean, I've seen, like, the national... I've seen the national championships of bowling on ESPN2 before. And Hell it's yeah, not dude. Really that interesting. Dude, it's darts not interesting. is on ESPN2 all the time, too. I love darts. That's because they're... And, and I told you, cornhole last time is one of the big yep. things they're, yep. they're doing right now. And I'm just like, you know, why can't... And we, when Nick and I were talking earlier, you know, if they had just gone ahead and made ESPN8, the Ocho, like, a yeah. channel... Dude, that'd be so fun. Just, or some type of obscure sports... 
wouldn't yeah. it be interesting to see the world championships of like porn or adult yeah. erotica? You know, you have something crazy out there. World championships of blowjobs or hand yeah. You know, the fast first. I don't know. The, the blowy world championship. <laughs> who, can, who can do the who can do the most? <laughs> the award would be the blowy dude. A hundred percent. They go for the blowy <laughs> championship trophy. Oh, God, I don't. Hire me now, ESPN8, the Ocho, non-rated edition after midnight. (laughs) I like to think as a true sports advocate, uh, you know, always saying that everybody should watch sports because it's entertaining that I would watch something like that. Everybody would watch that. I think that's how we uh, really get, you know, everybody all on one page. That would cause world peace. That, yeah, that's if we, that's how we build the viewership back up yep. for ESPN because they, yeah. their, their numbers are declining rapidly over the last couple months. Well, uh, I mean that's because they suck. ESPN. Yeah. Why? Why does ESPN <laughs> suck? I mean, no, no pun intended, but I just why, don't. Uh, I don't. Okay, ESPN is the best out there. I think. Yeah. But I think you could take Walmart, like everything right? they do and do it a little bit better. Interesting. Also, like, I just think, you know, there's a lot of really smart and wise people out there who know a lot more about sports than a lot of the people that are on there. Sure. And you Hence can just two guys on this podcast. Yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. No, I mean, yeah. honestly, I think there's people who are trained and trained in this profession who have gone to college to be a sports analyst and, and really do a lot of amazing things. And we see the same people every year on ESPN. <laughs> And right. I'm just like, you yeah. can't tell me that, you know, maybe somebody made it to the big leagues this year and they should be on ESPN and maybe somebody should drop down to triple A. Yeah. You exactly. know, like. Because if you if you look at it, the people that are the people that are these these the color commentators are typically going to be former athletes. You know, you, whether it's, yeah. like, you know, it's a, a, a Tony Romo or a Shannon. Tony Charter Romo is so Jalen good. Rose. Um, yeah, can we talk about really quick how Tony Romo is able dude. to predict what the defense is going to do dude. on like every play in every game he announces for, but he couldn't he, do that as a quarterback for the Cowboys. He couldn't do that as a quarterback for the Cowboys. Uh, Don't get me started on Tony Romo because as soon as you saw Tony Romo get injured, you saw a shift like by that team, and it wasn't because – Tony Romo was the best quarterback ever. It's because he was sure. very good at reading defenses, and he changed the play at the line all the damn time. Okay, then why? why so why was his touchdown to interception ratio like so high in certain seasons? And like, why did he choke in like big, big, big choking in big games? Happens to a lot of sure, people. It, it's you, it, 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 say Peyton Manning choked. In he the did, big but Peyton, Peyton Manning also won two Super Bowls and yeah. won four. And what? Yeah, and the Cowboys would have won a Super Bowl Hurts. if Dez caught it. You you think you think they would? Well, here's the thing, I, and this is where we differ. I don't know if we would have won that game because if the Packers had gotten the ball back, Rodgers was on fire, and they had a minute fifty two left on the clock to march down yeah. the field score again. We might have lost I, that game still, but I think we win that game. Sure, it was a catch. I mean, we're in agreement that it was. It was and after it was that, catch. we go, we run the table. And we win a championship. And then we talk about Tony Romo completely differently. It's not. I, 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 this, know, uh, because, uh, I, no, I can't get wait. in. This is something that I think we should talk about on another podcast, by the way, is yeah. how important championships are for like. Oh, absolutely. For, for people's, you know, stats and for the way we remember people. Yeah. I mean, because, so, I mean, God, so there's many, so many good yeah. players out there that we just forget about because they it's didn't true. win a championship. Tony Romo really was, if you look at his statistics through sure. those years, he's a top three quarterback. Yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah, well, top, yeah, I guess in some seasons he would have been top three. He didn't yeah. always get a ton of MVP votes, yeah, because he would show up in those big games. Yep. And under Jason Garrett for those first four years, they went eight and eight for, or three. Yeah, but seasons. Jason fucking Garrett. No. And that's what I mean. That team would have been fucking worse if we didn't have Tony Romo. True. Sure. Sure. Tony Romo was uh, changing plays. Like, uh, Jason Garrett. I'm so glad you're with the Giants. Yeah. Championships, right? championships, <laughs> cha- cha- championships manifest the debate for greatest of all time and yep. all of fame. All the damn time. Like, is, so here's a question. Here's a question for you. Is Tony Romo a first, second, third, and fourth ballot Hall of Famer? Has he done enough? He won two playoff games in over a day. Uh-huh. That's pretty I don't low. Know. I, I don't think he gets in. I really don't. I don't I think, think he does either. chance of getting in as, <laughs> as a commentator. <laughs> he deserves it. He's so good. He's the best he out there. He is. That's why, that's why CBS is paying him, you know, over $10 million a season. You know? I'm looking but, at I mean, his legacy right now. Mm-hmm. He did have a really impressive career. 
He did. As far as numbers, uh, but, I mean, ninth most in NFL play. history with in passing touchdowns. Uh huh. Um, he's a franchise career leader in passing yards, touchdown passes well, for the Cowboys. Eight. True. I mean, Aikman only played eight, for Stahlback. 11 years, you know, that's true. And Stahlback played an era when offenses, you know, weren't really predicated on passing the ball. Romo's so, career passing, passing rating was 97.1, which is fourth best in NFL history. Wow. Um, and he's only trailing Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson, and Tom Brady. Aaron Rodgers' mm-hmm. uh, passer rating went down yeah. this last season, and it's going to continue to go down because he's on his way out of the league. Um, Tom Brady, yeah. well, Tom Brady we'll is 57 we'll years old now, so he's going to well, retire man, in a moment. I, I don't know. He we'll, might get in we'll the Hall of Fame. He might get the Hall of Fame. Tom Brady? No, yeah, I wonder. Romo. Oh, Romo. I think it's Tom he Brady. Might, like, yeah, Tom he Brady might, might, might get in the Hall of Fame. If you, I don't think so, man. <laughs> I mean, like, I he, doesn't, he doesn't hold any of he, so, he led 27 game winning drives in the fourth quarter in an overtime. Right. But if you look That's at a lot. The, look at look at the quarter, other quarterbacks that have gotten into the Hall of Fame that didn't win a Super Bowl. Yeah, you know, I know. There's they, not many. They didn't win a lot of MVPs. You know, like yeah. uh, like Dan Marino obviously is going to go down as one of the greatest to ever play and the greatest to play that never won a Super Bowl. You know, um, you look at a guy like him. He also holds a lot of regular season and career records that Romo is not a part of, and those are what those stats are juicy to the analysts that vote him in and the, the former players that vote him in and the reporters that vote him in. You know, so yeah. I, I think he's going to have a pretty tough time with it. Um, yeah, I think he is too. Yeah. But and so did like Chip Kelly and some other people, so. It, yeah, 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 that's true. Uh, so, so moving on, uh, another another piece of recent information that we just heard just in from Foxborough, Massachusetts. Wow. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, first of all, the Patriots signed Cam Newton to a one-year mm-hmm. deal. Um, it's incentive laden. So it means he's got a very small salary, but he uh, could get a pretty massive salary if he <laughs> takes the Patriots to the Super Bowl. Yeah, which is <laughs> not very likely because no. their offense it's is they, no wide receivers awful. and a middling offensive line and a running back by committee approach, which we see does not work unless you have a dominant quarterback. And so. you have Cam Newton, who is not as smart as Tom Brady, cannot change no. the play at the line of scrimmage. Yeah. And... Let me put it this way. It's going to struggle. Oh, yeah. If, if, if he was able to find his 2014-2015... Uh, Not going to happen. Of the year, ...his MVP campaign... Yeah. ...then sure. But we also have to remember that, you know, he once again led led the league in rushing for quarterbacks, was top yep. 20 in the league in rushing in general. Yep. Uh, by far. He's been hit the most out of any quarterback since coming into the league. So yep. it's difficult. And he hit hard. Yeah, he did. You know, Because he's, he's big. Dude. He like, when he goes down, you've got, anybody. like, 400 pounds of just terribleness coming yeah. all over the place. Yeah, and if, if anything that we've learned from another – we'll talk about the, the CTE scandal today with how yep. Roger Goodell is in general as a commissioner. Yeah. Um, but, you know, on top of that and stuff, you know, I, I can't imagine how it's already affecting him mentally. Oh, now he's yeah. He's in the league for a decade. You know, yeah, we'll see what uh, happens. It's going to be bad, I think, honestly. Yeah, I, I don't – I don't, I don't uh, understand why they didn't sign somebody like Winston – or Winston, Winston's younger. That's true. Winston is younger. If they're going he, to go for Cam Newton, why did you not sign Winston? They're the same damn have, quarterback. Well, Cam Newton has he's he's been out of he was he wasn't the Panthers starting quarterback, so they he was injured last year. That's for, why he wasn't but, starting. But they could get him for less money. I think James Winston's probably still stuck to I want to start and I want X amount of money, or I'm just going to sit out the season. I can but see he's with that. the Saints now. Yeah, he went in as a backup after Bridgewater. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, they, the, the base deal was one point one million, with a salary of nine hundred fifty-two thousand, and a bonus of one hundred forty-eight, and he can earn three point three million in incentives. Right, but Drew Brees is going on forty-one years old, and yeah. he's currently he's got one or two good years left. And if he goes out like he did last season, that Saints offense is already set up to win. And so, I mean, yeah. they're, you know, they're, the entire team is the Patriots. There's no offensive weapons at all. So I think that's why Winston chose to go be a backup in New Orleans. I, I get why he did it. To go, you know, win a Super Bowl. Yeah, but you won't start team. in New England? With no, they'll start in New Bill England, but they don't, have a chance. They, they don't have a chance to win a Super yeah, Bowl. Yeah, but you get I, better I because you're, you're working with Bill fucking Belichick. True, but Belichick's <laughs> he made Tom Brady. True. He didn't make Tom True. Brady. Tom Brady made himself. They made each other. They helped each other out for sure. Absolutely. Okay. 
Um, so and we get, a, yeah, let's talk about cheating in the Patriots. Good segue. Good segue. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> let's just start out with America's uh, the team America loves to hate the New England yeah. Patriots. I uh, hate, hate the Patriots. Patriots. Nobody likes the Patriots except Gary. Gary Irish. likes the Patriots. Way to go, Gary. Yeah, he he just flipped me off. So, uh, yeah. you know, I was just I was going down the list of just the litany of issues and scandals that have been on the Patriots' doorstep Dude. for the last twelve years. Absolutely you know, from, ridiculous. That from list. Spygate to Deflategate to this most recent thing where they were taking the the Bengals game. Yep. Uh, yep. Practice. That, and, I'm glad uh, that it was announced today. I was wondering if people remembered that. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think that one was as big. You know, I mean, a, a one point one million dollar fine and loss of a third round pick. That's pretty huge. That's huge for them, but I think that's why it hasn't really been in the news much. It doesn't seem like like I haven't really yeah. seen that on Sports Center recently. Um, and you think they'd be jumping on any NFL news? <laughs> yeah, like, true. They jump on anything right now. All right. So, so for those for, for those of you guys that don't know, uh, Spygate happened around uh, circa two thousand eight, two thousand nine, uh, where it was essentially the same thing. They had uh, they had. They had trainers out there with cameras going on the New York <laughs> Jets practices, checking their you know what the Astros did too. They were checking their sig- yep. like their signals for certain plays that the coach will you know he'll send to the middle linebacker or safety or the quarterback uh, to let them know what play they're running next. And Belichick and then they were caught in it, and at first he obviously denied it, and then he was like, "Oh, everybody does it," and then he's like, "I'm not going to talk about it. We already got punished. Let's move on." <laughs> and, uh, so we're, everyone's like, "Okay, fine, fine. Spygate, whatever. Man, I mean, not a big deal. Okay, whatever." Yeah. Then the 2015 conference championship comes around, where uh, a young, uh, who I still thought should not have retired so soon, uh, Andrew Luck and his Indianapolis Colts were blown out by the Patriots. Yeah, on their way to their fifth Super Bowl, and. I mean, so basically the thing was they said there was a ball boy, they claimed, that a ball boy was going through and taking the game footballs that they were using to throw with, and he was (laughs) deflating them to under the standard PSI that the NFL regulates every ball should be at during gameplay. Okay, and the the advantage for this is the quarterback, when they get it, they're able to grip the football a little stronger, and they have more accuracy and more touch with when they throw it, because when it's too inflated, then it's harder for them to get it into the spots they want. It's also really hard to catch. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. But a a funny thing was other quarterbacks, you know, like, I mean, guys like Aaron Rodgers, even Peyton Manning, uh, uh, Ben Roethlisberger, guys like that, they'd come out and said, yeah, we've done that before during practice um and i think some of them had said they had done it during games too uh, it's just kind of common like they were defending brady their brother I yeah guess. everybody everybody does it yeah but at the same time, did do it like that's yeah, like yeah, you got caught <laughs> yeah exactly you you can't you can't come in and i mean what i don't even remember, what were the sanctions that were placed on the patriots from that i don't even I think i remember let me see here i don't I know did they anything lost. happen? It, Brady was suspended for the first four games of the season. That's how Jimmy uh, Jimmy Garoppolo started. Jimmy Garoppolo, um, dude. Yeah, remember he started. He went four and yeah. or three and one or whatever. Uh, I think he went three and one. Season. Yeah. Um, so Brady was suspended for four games, and it looks like it was mainly Brady. So there were a couple other small things, but the big thing was Brady being suspended for the four, yeah. the first four. I think games of the Brady was season. the only thing that really got hit hard. Yeah, and that's the thing is, like, did Brady know about it? Yeah. Probably, but you know, I mean, you know, in the grand scheme of things, whatever. The Patriots are yeah. haters across the board, and that's why we love to hate them. You know, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, right? Like, they just cheat. Yeah, they do. Like, honestly, and, that they they did deflate gate too. Like, that's absolutely. what literally this next that what they did today, what what they got caught for and fined for today. That's deflate gate yeah. too. I, too. I mean, yeah. spy gate too. Yeah, my yeah. bad. Right. Yeah, I mean, because uh, I mean. They literally did the exact same thing, except yeah. they did it from a live game. Yeah, and, and I mean that's that's the thing. Here's the thing: if, if if this is true, if it's one of those like Lance Armstrong things, where it's like, oh, of course I doped for my six Tour de France titles, but everybody yeah. was doping, so yeah. you know it's it's fair game, or you know it, all these it's just like are baseball does the same thing. Happening. Yeah, if if everybody's doing it, that's fine. Yeah. Let's get that to the board of governors and let's pass it and make it legal. Or no, I like the way we're doing guys, it. 
why are these why are these guys constantly getting caught? Like fire the motherfucker who's in charge yeah. of designing these. They're not very good to... at spying, honestly. No, they're not. They've gotten caught three times in twelve yeah. years. Everybody and... else is doing it, but they keep getting caught. And I'm like, come on, you gotta get better at cheating. <laughs> honestly. <laughs> Hey, we don't condone condone cheating on this podcast. I mean, but cheating is the way of life, apparently, to sports. <laughs> Everything. Honestly. Get better at it if you're gonna yeah, do it. Yeah, you need to get better at cheating. <laughs> so this leads this leads into this so that's a good segue into not I don't necessarily if I would call I would be pretty close to calling the NFL the most corrupt and scandalous of the no way FIFA is way more corrupt FIFA is but I guess of just like domestically of the okay American yeah the US federations yeah um, of the American Sporting Association football yeah, exactly. is definitely the most yeah. corrupt and I think we can both agree currently over the last 30 years Roger Goodell is the worst Dude, commissioner Roger Goodell is so bad he, the, the man just reminds me of hate and he reminds me of, of someone that I just despise and loathe just because it's not even just the way the guy looks. He has a very punchable face, for sure. But, like, I, I just... He does have a punchable I face. I can't, I can't defend anything this guy does because he's such a spineless coward. Yeah. It's just so difficult to add root for him, you know? And, like, you want to root for the guy. You know, like, people may not have liked the former commissioner of the NBA, David Stern, but he did get stuff done. You know, he helped, you know, he helped, he, the NFL is already growing as it is. And if anything, it's, it, he stunted the growth of the league. You know, I mean, Adam Silver, yeah. like, guy that currently runs the NBA, like, everybody loves him because yeah. he, he lets holds, every, the players do their stuff. Yeah, he holds the owners accountable. I mean, I yeah. think the NBA, the NBA is the best run out of the major oh, sports 100%. Yeah. 100%. The players, the players run it, which they should be running it because they are yeah. the ones putting their, their, their I, I, they the run, line. they run the social part of it. Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. And the NFL, yeah. basically, the owners, I mean, kind of the NFL PA gets involved, but it's really... I don't know what the NFL does, period. Honestly, socially. I'm sure or they like, have tons of charities that we, that we aren't thinking I of know, right but now. I don't Are know they, any... I yeah. can't think of it. Because, like, okay. I mean... The NBA has so many they, – they go out, they let, you know, the players talk about what's going on after right. at the end of, you know, interviewing. Yeah. Um, and they let them really tell them what – you know, tell reporters what they think is – what they think about, right? right? Like they allow them to be people, whereas the NFL is very much like they go to their lockers after, you know, after the game, and it's scripted answers because yeah. – they don't want somebody to do something wild. Exactly. They don't want Colin Kaepernick, Colin Kaepernick 2.0. So they just give him no. a script and say, follow this. When Colin Kaepernick was pretty good for the NFL on a long-term scale. Yeah, he would not. And so we, there, there's a lot of speculation around the NFL that Goodell and the other 32 owners have decided to completely blacklist Kaepernick. That's why he hasn't had a job in the last couple of years. Which um, I think is true. I, I would have to agree. I mean, I, do I think the guy's a starting caliber Hell quarterback no. anymore? No, absolutely not. I don't not. think he, he was to begin with. I mean, when, he started, when he started, when he started kneeling, when he started kneeling, I don't yeah, think he was a starting last, quarterback anymore. After their trip to the Super Bowl where they barely lost to the Ravens. Yeah. I, in like 20. 2012-2013. Yeah, his last couple of years in San Francisco, his numbers started to go downhill. But you can't tell me that Kaepernick is worse than all this, all this, the second string and all the third string yeah, it's, and practice it's not some possible. quarterbacks in the NFL. There's no way. You yeah. know, unless he just, unless he's secretly getting these offers from teams where they're only offering him a they're third string job. It. I highly doubt he's doing that. I, I don't mean, think he is either. He, I mean, the guy's got to He's not doing it right now. You know, outside of that Nike ad that came out a couple years ago, I haven't seen him in anything outside of, you know, his social justice platforms and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, here's – and here this goes back to my initial point about Goodell and how the corruption at the highest levels of all the major sporting leagues across – not just America, but across the world, and we'll get to FIFA in particular in a minute. Um, but Goodell just – you can tell he's this sniveling weasel. <laughs> he has no moral, he has no ethics and no moral compass yeah. at all because he doesn't stand for anything. It's not, regardless of what side of the aisle you're on for this whole, you know, kneeling during the flag and where yeah. you are with, with BLM, Goodell doesn't take a stand at all. And this is... Yeah, just do not, something. 
Just do something. I, you know, I mean, I, I, may, I may dislike which way you go. But yeah, which is fine. Or something and have some, have some goddamn respect for yourself. Because yeah. you can't hide behind the shadows when you're the commissioner of the most profitable and lucrative sporting the sport in, in, in the country. It's, yeah. it's not going to happen. You know, I mean, he, so all this stuff with, of course, when Kaepernick was kneeling, you know, there's this, there's this big, he's like, oh, the, you know, disrespecting flag, of course, that we all remember mm-hmm. the argument. Yeah. And the fact that Goodell first said, okay, players need to be, we, we, I, he's like, I'd like to ask owners to request that their players stand, salute, put their hand over yeah, their Yeah, good for he's him. He stood up for something. It he was a dumb something. way of standing up for yeah. something, but. But at least he did something, you mm-hmm. know, like this, and this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about the actual motive behind it. We're just talking about he right. stood for something. Fine. Yeah. So I showed him a little bit of background and then he comes back and this is what the big thing I have a problem with. It he, he, it's not, it's not that he reversed his stance. I don't have a problem with somebody reversing their stance on anything. Um, but I didn't believe that he was fully committed to what he was saying. He didn't talk about, he didn't talk about Kaepernick. He didn't specifically address the kneeling. He just said, people should be able to yep. protest how they want. And yep. I'm like, well, that's that's great and everything, but what specifically about that that's going to affect the NFL next year? Right. What, what's the stance on the league or what's your stance? Or, and he didn't say anything. You know, at least like you know, Drew Brees, he had his whole thing about he's like, yep. he will kneel and disrespect the flag. And then he reversed it and said, I talked to some of my, yeah, I talked to a lot of my friends, a lot of my teammates. Yeah. His worldwide. teammates told him about what right. it really stood for. Right, and he, he he switched his he switched his stance. Yeah. Specifically to one to one side. And yeah. I, I'm I'm fine I'm fine with that. You know, great for him. I mean I mean I, I agree with him on that. But even if he hadn't switched it and he still stood for the other thing, I mean, I, I'd probably still I'd, I'd still think he'd have a bit more of a backbone. I'd still think he was he was not a, a, like I said a sniveling yeah. power. You know, someone like yeah. that who just he hides behind everything. So, yeah, I hate that. Absolutely it, awful. It's ridiculous. So moving past that, let's look at, I mean, let, let's start out with the Ray Rice incident. We all yeah, remember yeah. that footage. You know, yeah. um, and it, it's out there. TMZ, three game suspension. Three, just to start, it was a two game suspension. Yeah. And then they moved it to three, and then it was to four. And then finally, after he got all this backlash everywhere, they went ahead and suspended, they suspended Rice for indefinitely. And he was out for two years. And then obviously yeah. he was at the end of his career anyway, so he, he couldn't really make a comeback. Yeah, you know we. Well, I don't know if he is at the end of his career. I guess 27, 28. I mean, most running backs only last till thirty, thirty-one. He's um, thirty-three but, now. I mean. Okay, maybe he was a little younger. Maybe he was twenty-five, yeah. twenty-six when that happened. Huh. Yeah, he um, he probably had some time, but. So you, ha- you he have he didn't deserve the time. <laughs> right, and then you have you know the Adrian Peterson thing that went on way too long, where he was like he was whipping his son with a yeah, like with a, a switch. Yeah, like, like a, a switch sticks. Yeah, a stick, pretty much. Yeah, and like his son had huge gashes on his legs, and social services yep. got involved. And look, I mean, you know, spanking your child, like I'm, at, you know, I'm not gonna lie, I'm for that actually. You know, when I have children, I, I, I see me, you know, but not beating your child to where they're like, they're they're like bleeding everywhere, and there's yeah. these gigantic gashes on their legs. Like that's that's not okay. And yeah. it took Goodell multiple over a month to decide that they were going to suspend Peterson yeah. for I think it was for there's so much of that 14 games or something I mean it's yeah. not just Peterson I mean you have Hardy God, Greg Hardy yeah um, where he like threw his girlfriend onto a pile of automatic weapons and threatened to kill her and she had like yeah. recording of it and stuff and Kareem so, like, Hunt did, yeah yeah Kareem Hunt yeah uh, kicking the wrong stomach yeah I mean you know? football has a problem with yeah, they do. that but it just goes back to showing Football has that. a serious anger problem. Absolutely. And I think we yeah, I think we as a society in general, we kind of, you know, we put these athletes on on that pedestal, pedestal? and we say yeah. they can't do wrong, you know. Um, and it's it's a lot it's of them toxic, do a lot it's toxic of man. Yeah, it is. You know, it's 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 good in some ways and it's bad in some ways. I think the ways that it's pr- primarily bad is where there's even like video and audio evidence of these things happening yep. and the NFL tries to cover it up because they don't want to hurt their market value. They don't want to lose money. Yeah. CTE. So the, the so, cover and CTE. Up. And that was, yeah, there you go. Let's, let's get into that. I was, I was going to jump into that anyways. Um, yeah. We, we briefly talked about that in our, our first episode, but yep. you know, if you've ever seen the movie uh, concussion, was it concussion? The, the Will Smith one where he plays the doctor. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah it was concussion. Yeah, so you know he plays. That was a pretty good movie. It was, and it was, it was a. Will Smith. 
So I, I, I didn't like Luke Wilson playing Roger Goodell. That one didn't make any sense to me. I don't like uh, Luke Wilson, but I like <laughs> Will Smith. So <laughs> I like Will Smith too. But uh, you know, it, it's that same thing. You know, these there there's scientific research, a lot of scientific research showing yeah. that the concussion because the brain inside inside your skull there's no natural padding for your brain it's nope. not meant to be shaken around and like it's <laughs> yes. not supposed to bang against bone like day after day after day <laughs> uh, what do you think is going to happen these people you know, like it sends them into deep depression when they retire from the league a lot of them yeah. committed, a lot of players committed suicide yeah um, it's because you're uh, bruising your brain right exactly like they're they're all they're suffering their brain dies loss. Right, you know, early onset dementia in some of them. Yeah. Um, and for years, you know, Roger Goodell had been, every single time the question came up from reporters, he'd say these accusations are just aimed at stripping and hurting the name of the NFL. Yeah. And it's just got to stop. They're like, there's no proof around this. And so that doctor just kept coming out with more and more proof, and he kept doing autopsies on more and yeah. more players. And Junior said how. Out, Drew Sayer was a big one. Yeah. yeah. It was sad. I was really sad yeah. the day that he actually passed away. Very, very um, sad. But he said, you know, study my body. Right. Tell me what's going on in my brain that is making me, you know, be of have impulse control. You right. know, depression, aggression, paranoia. Like, those, yeah. those are just some of the symptoms. And Goodell right. knew about it. He did, and he, he, tried to, he tried to hide it up. And I think yeah. you see that a lot through history. It's, this isn't just Roger Goodell doing this. I mean, no. this is, all sports um, do it. This is this is every politician in the history of almost oh, every yeah. country across the history of humanity. This is every every world leader, you know, from you know centuries upon millennia ago. You know, with great power comes great responsibility, but with that great power, it corrupts a lot of people, and money corrupts a lot of people, and you know, it might take the might take someone who's like a you know, guy. Mother Teresa was kind of crazy person. We really look at it. Um, <laughs> oh, I don't know. Oprah Winfrey, I guess. I have no idea. Um, sure, someone like Oprah. Um, Everybody's you know, it, bad. It turn, exactly. You know, it, it turns it turns her into a you know like a Mussolini type figure. You know, maybe not that diabolical, but he, he you, does corrupt. Oprah he running does the United States just like Mussolini. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> You get a death sentence. You get a death sentence. You get a death sentence. <laughs> no, no, that's horrible. But it, it, it just goes to show that reg regardless of I, – I don't know who currently has Goodell in their back pocket. I mean, I know the NFL owners do, but I feel like there's other outside oh, entities yeah, that who knows? are oh, somehow wow. connected to this because um, – you know his his contract was renewed renewed somehow yeah and it'll get I, renewed again i don't know when it comes yeah. to roger goodell i don't understand it but you know it's, it's just like, i just don't know what the nfl is thinking when yeah. it comes to him and why they keep on signing him over and over right. again and giving him pay raises he since since being since being signed since being signed in 2006, yeah, 2006. This being signed 2006, Roger Goodell by himself has made 180.5 million dollars in salary, just in salary, not counting incentives, not counting any type of advertising deals that he may have from the NFL over this 14-year period. You know, and we're we're looking at a guy that has never touched the professional field. You know, never actually yeah. helped. A certain team, and that is constantly under scrutiny. That is just, he's just a, a horrible leader, and he's making this much money off the league, um, and it's just, it's, it's frustrating. Yeah, I, I mean, I, and, and there's so many things. Like, I'm just, I, I have some notes here that I wrote down about him, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the things that I think that he hasn't even changed that I just think are outrageous, like the blackout rules. Uh, oh they have some of the most tyrannical, I guess, blackout policy mm -hmm. ever. It has not been changed since 1973. And Jeez. all four major sports do have blackout policies, but the NFL is on a whole new level. Right. Um, I mean, he's, you know, just nothing compared to other commissioners. Football isn't is starting to not be fun anymore. Like the football players can't have fun. 
There is no cele- like celebrations have changed. That's There's so many ridiculous. rules. Yeah, that's so stupid. Let um, the guy, I mean, he scores a touchdown. Let him make, let him express how he wants to. Who cares? Yeah. And yeah, I mean, yeah. the the penalties, you can't touch the quarterback anymore. And I know player safety is a huge deal, but you know what? Sometimes a quarterback's going to get hit and he's going to land hard. How the hell is a defensive lineman supposed to shift 400 pounds of weight, 300 pounds, whatever it is, of weight on a quarterback when he's coming down? You're asking these players to do the impossible. Um, I mean, and I understand punishing, you know, having fun i guess if you're peeing on a goalpost or you know (laughs) some of the stuff we've seen you know i use pee on the goalpost because that clemson university student did that um i mean the fines are outrageous there's just so many things the relationship with the players he doesn't they he doesn't have a relationship with the players how many times have you seen a player come up to and accept an award from him and they refuse to shake his hand or yeah. refuse to give him a hug or it's, it's really quick like they won't look at him in the eye they'll look directly at the camera and like just wave to the audience or something um it's just insane. even during the draft you'll notice that like you watch the nfl draft um players will frequently do that yeah. So, uh, I mean, so we, I, we didn't even talk about, you know, the Brett Favre sexting scandal. I don't know if you remember oh, that. No, I don't. But when he sent, yeah, he sent those sex messaging uh, texts to uh, a camp for the Jets, and they said they wouldn't sue Brett Favre if the NFL suspended him. And right. the NFL didn't suspend him, and now it's in a court battle. Yeah. From top to bottom, every major money scheme – and this may this probably goes even outside of sports, but sports in general, due to how due to its popularity across the masses in every way, shape, and form, it's easy to find the corruption. It's easy to find the scandal because yeah. there's so much money to be made, and there's there's a brand that needs to be that needs to be held. You know, um, so we could talk about Goodell all day. I think we yeah. have some pretty good notes on the majority yeah. of that statement with him. Um, so there's the other, a lot more corruption that we can talk about. I kind of wanted to do that. I wanted to jump into really quick, um, and we'll kind of segue into uh, Penn State in a second. But uh-huh. just, just, and I want to know your thoughts too on the NCAA and paying players in the major sports that bring <laughs> such a large revenue, whether it's basketball, baseball, football, um, any any of those at all. Um, you know, I know wrestling is surprisingly actually pretty big, at least on ESPN. Um, where, where do you think? Where, where is your personal view on that? Do you think the players should be making money outside of a small stipend and a college scholarship? I don't think the schools should have the ability to play pay players. Okay. Awesome. I think the players should be able to go out and get sponsorship deals. Okay. I think they should be able to put Adidas on their body if they're sponsored by Adidas. I think they should be able to sign sunglasses, contracts, whatever the hell they want to sign. They should be able to do that. But when you start having a school paying players, it's no longer a school. The purpose of school is not to play football. The purpose of school is to Get get an education. Right. So when you start paying players, you're taking away from the majority of people who are going there to be educated and sending it to the minority of people who play football. Okay. So let's let's take a look at this. We see college football coaches and training staffs and university presidents and mm-hmm. the athletic directors of those departments. And, you know, especially the, you know, if you look at, like, the big five, you know, look at Ohio State, UT, Michigan, USC. Yeah. Uh, and Florida, you know, or something like that. Uh, or Alabama. Alabama. Um, and when you look at those – the, I mean, the, the, the salary for, you know, Nick Saban and, you know, guys like, uh, oh, you even know. when Matt Brown was coaching for UT. We didn't talk about Texas A&M. Yeah. They yeah, just yeah. signed, um, oh, I forgot his name. They got rid of, uh, they got rid of Kevin Sumlin. They got rid of Jimbo Fisher, right? No, Jimbo Fisher is their coach right now. That's who it is. He is the Fisher right now. Yeah, they signed him a couple years ago, I think, didn't they? Or is it just uh, last year? I think it's last year. Okay. But yeah, he's got his salary is like seven and a half million dollars. See, that's what I'm talking about. These guys, so <laughs> these, these a, a lot of out, out of all the stuff that I've read and a lot of former athletes that I've talked to just over the years and stuff. Currently, how it's set up. I mean, I know California and then a lot, the NCAA right now um, because of pressure actually put on by Draymond Green of the Golden State Warriors, and there's also a congressman from Connecticut 
that is uh, uh, was also pushing it through in Congress and stuff. Uh, they were saying, why are these pay why are these players not paid, or at least why are they not offered offered full insurance like years after they graduated? And what if they don't go on to play professionally? What if they suffered an injury at the age of 19, 20, or 21, and then they never made it pro, and they yeah. maybe that injury it you know it hindered them somewhere along the line in their future. They have no insurance to, to pay for the physical therapy and the surgeries and stuff like that. So Draymond and this this congressman, they've been coming out and other people too. And they've been saying like that, that makes least, sense to have right, something yeah. like that, like an insurance fund for players. That right. makes a lot of sense after they after they retire or you know and yeah. like giving them more than just the full scholarship, like giving them a stipend each month, um, offering assistance to their parents or something if they have yeah. to move. So they can be no 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 offering assistance to help them find a job somewhere but um, why would their parents people, have to move some some people have, you have to think about it some some people have god they have really hard upbringings and stuff yeah and maybe they were working in high school to help support the family and now that they're leaving they can't work to send money back to them so maybe you know like maybe the kid comes to he comes to the university of texas and he's from you know let's say he's from okay. Abilene, texas for those of you that don't yeah, know, like, I, you know i'm seeing what you're texas. saying that's a good point yeah so and he brings him in. So I'm saying that there should be I, I like would, the Reggie Bush scandal where he moved his family in. Right, and as Zion Williamson's going through that right now, yeah. in his old marketing agency, they're they're saying, "Oh, you broke our deal prematurely, uh-huh. so you need to admit that your parents took all of these initial incentives from Nike, Adidas, and yep. Reebok, and all that to play at Duke." You know, and um, uh, the player from Memphis. Did. Right. Yeah. Penny yeah. Hardaway um, moved his okay. family to Memphis. All right, all right. Um, so, I guess with with me, the amount of money that we're paying these coaches, the amount of money that is going back into not necessarily the school, but looking at the salaries of the presidents and the athletic directors, and it's just astronomically higher than any other position because yeah. of the extra money they're making off the TV deals, the extra money they're making off of these students playing. Yeah. I don't see why it can't be a little fairer in why why at least we can't spread the wealth a little bit more because it's I mean I, I think it's, that's been corrupt since they started the NCAA and started televising college games I guess um, there's some things that you pointed out which makes sense like fam- help for family stuff like that right uh, that sure could be awarded more, by scholarships right um, that could be awarded by financial aid um, <laughs> and so football coaches don't touch it but right, the financial right. aid office touches it Right, right. Stuff like that makes a lot of sense. But again, you start paying players like actually a salary. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to disagree with you on a lot of that because it just it. I don't know. It, it's just not how college is supposed to be. That's not what college that, is for. I think that as long as you're maintaining, if you're an athlete like that and you're in one of those sports that does offer that much money, especially if you're in such a physically demanding sport where it takes up all of your time and you're really not going to class. I mean, I guarantee you there are a ton of those athletes that are barely attending classes and turning home. I know they're not. I go to UH and uh, we have basketball, I have basketball players in some of my classes Mm -hmm. and um, my, one of my hardest accounting classes, uh, this player never Uh, came to class once and still made an A in the class and never took a test without a tutor there with them. Right. So, I mean, they're not really going to school, but that's a whole different set of issues. Yeah, I mean, I, I, and I think that's where, that's where we, we are just going to disagree on. I, I think that all these the players that are in every sport that's televised that they're allowed or that they do receive an overabundance of money, I think that the majority of the players, if not all of them, should have some larger stipend than what they currently get. And what do you do stipend. for the little schools? Be, it depends on how much money they're bringing in. Right. But and what, to, what do you do for, for like even but non-little you know, schools? Like you take oh, Alabama, but that's, Texas that's A&M. Point. Right. So the big, I'll tell you, so the big schools that come in, the big schools that are, so the Alabamas, the, the Ohio States, the USC's, whatever, mm-hmm. those guys are probably going to get a larger chunk of the change because there's the ones that are at you know, their jerseys and their hats and their seats and they are selling their games or the nationally televised ones. So obviously those bigger schools are going to get more. But even the smaller schools like the WAC and the Sunbelt Conference and the Big East Boise now State. at this point. Boise State, you know, those guys still have a lot of regional money coming in. Um, so, yeah, obviously, there's going to be more incentive for the really good players to, you know, probably lean towards playing for the bigger schools, but that's already the case, you know? 
I mean, yeah, but you still th- see like sometimes players will go to a different school because it's close to them. You know, they mm-hmm. could be, you know, going to one of the major five schools, but they choose seven or eight because, you know, their parents were fans for a long sure. time. You would get that. It would get rid of that. And I, I'm not saying I'm not saying take I'm not saying jump in with a salary of okay you're getting a, an additional you know sixty to hundred thousand dollars a year I'm not saying that uh, okay you know, if, so if you, if my point is it's it's enough to get you by and then some it'll give you a little extra on the side to where you don't have to get that second job to where you can just fully concentrate on your studies and the football field because most of those players that are third stringers and they go to the smaller schools a lot of them are working they have part time jobs. You know, so I don't know. It's, it's I could see that. Out. If you're but, saying, you know, instead of a, instead of a full ride scholarship, which comes out of everybody's money pool, by the way, instead of that full yeah. ride scholarship, we'll pay you sixty thousand dollars a year. Fine. And use it how you want. Yeah, fine. Uh, I, I think. Yeah, I, I think. There, but you got to get just, rid of that full time scholarship then. That's because yeah, that's just that, that comes just, out of the stupid of money pool. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I would still think I would still want to have full scholarship and then a smaller stipend than that. I'm not saying something that large. You but know, then um, what about, I mean, it just, that becomes a huge issue for me because there's students out there who bring, you know, eventually will bring in a lot more than a football player. Yeah. Yeah. And they're, you know, the ones who sit there and they, they help those universities become research universities. They, they go and get their you know, doctorate and then they go back to the university and teach other people. They benefit the school way more than a football player does. Sure. And yeah. they'll, they'll get a full ride scholarship, but then they're also going to have to work and they're going to get paid $12 an hour and struggle. Yeah. Unfortunately, Whereas football the- player doesn't have to do that. And he gets a full ride scholarship without the grades, without the effort, most of the time. Right. Unfortunately, life isn't fair, and the things I that, they currently that. Are, are currently not in, those don't pay, bring in any money. You know? I mean, well, they, and they I, do I understand that. But what I'm saying is, you know, the I guess if I just think this scholarship should be out of the question if you're getting paid. Okay. Well, a debate for another day, because I think we'll yeah. that one even longer. So let's let's use this to segue into Probably, in, in my opinion, and I remember following this nine years ago, one of the most heinous scandals in the history of any college athletic program, uh, the Penn State child sex abuse scandal with Jerry yeah. Sandusky and sure. Joe, uh, Joe Paterno hiding it. Um, and I actually read Joe Paterno's autobiography that was... That was Did he hide it? He, uh, here's the thing. So here's what I read. Here's what I had read in that and a lot of our other articles that were coming out. Um, for those of you that don't know, let's preface it really quick because um, we got, we're running out of time, but we'll, we'll, we'll power through this one because I do want to get through it. Um, with, with this one in particular, uh, Jerry Sandusky was an assistant coach to Joe Paterno for the uh, uh, Penn State Nittany Lions men's college football team from is the basically the 1950s to uh, the late 2000s, early early 20 teens. Yeah. Um, Paterno coached him for 62 years, I think. Um, and so Sandusky was his uh, he mainly did, was the offensive coordinator, for, excuse me, defensive coordinator for the most part, and he had a uh, he had a charity program for underprivileged youth boys. And this program was renowned across the Northeast and probably the country for helping out children that, you know, they didn't have a father from a young age. They came from a broken home. Um, you know, maybe their, their parents needed help putting them through to like the specialized football camps or sporting a camp of their choice. And Sandusky and his wife, they ran this charity for decades. It was just, it was just ridiculous. Um, and then the second uh, mile is what it was called. Yeah, th- there you go, the second mile. And then around, uh, excuse me, then around uh, 2011, reports started coming out that J- Jerry Sandusky had actually been sexually assaulting and raping these young boys. And these boys ranged between the ages of like nine and seventeen over a you know a forty something year period. What he would do essentially is he would use his charity organization as a cover-up and he would Mm -hmm. bring these boys with him on road games and he would let the boys stay in his hotel room with them and he would like make it seem legit like they'd have two beds or there'd be like a cot in there for the kid and he'd sleep on the bed kind of thing um but you know it's it's just like anybody who's ever been sexually assaulted or or raped or anything like that when it happens to you i myself have never gone through that thank god (laughs) but you you don't know how to react 
you yeah. know, how do you as a not as a as a young boy like at that age, how do you how do you go and and tell somebody who's going to believe you? He's this he's this older guy, yeah. and you you've never you know you've never been in a mature relationship before. You've never done anything yeah. sexual before with anybody. What do you do? How do you react to something like that? And the guy's a predator. He preyed yeah. on these young kids, and I, I, I thank God that he is now in jail for the rest of his yeah. miserable fucking life. Um, but the fact that what happened with the story is 52 that counts of sexual abuse of young boys over 15, over a 15 year period, Jesus. 1994 to 2009. Right. And it was covered up. Let's yeah. not forget about it. They that. actually, so in the late '90s, they had actually had a report come in from one of the coaches a while back. Had actually, he said he was he was putting stuff away in the locker room, and he was one of the younger coaches. And he had walked into the showers, and he walked in, and he had just heard this constant thumping against the wall of the showers. And so he walks in, and he sees Jerry Sandusky bent over this young boy and obviously making a thrusting motion. I think you can guess the rest of the picture. And he doesn't do anything. I mean, I guess you might be shocked to the point you're like, what do I do? That was in 2002. Uh, The assistant coach, Mike McQueary. Mike McQueary, that's it. Yeah, God. Um, And he actually got a lot of uh, blowback because he didn't say anything initially. He He reported it. To Joe what, Paterno. To Joe Paw, yeah, yeah. And Joe yeah. Paw did they reported it to the athletic director and the athletic yeah. director reported it to campus police. They never reported it to the actual local authorities in, in Pennsylvania. And so he in Paterno's mind, he was saying, he's like, Look, these 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 athletes are my kids. I I want to provide a safe space here at Penn State. In our guidebook, in our rule book, the law of the land was when you hear about any type of sexual assault or domestic violence case, you report it to the athletic director. You report it to your direct boss, and they will handle it with the local authorities. So in Joe Paz's defense, what he claims, he did that, and then he let it go because it was out of his hands at that point. From a moral standpoint, yeah. should he yeah. have done more? Yes. Yeah, I would have to agree that, yeah, I, I would have absolutely. Well, if not, sorry. It's not out of your hands. Yeah, no, it's not yeah. out of your hands at all. No. <laughs> I mean, that's a, an old way of thinking about it, you know. <laughs> oh, I called my boss, so I'm innocent now. Yeah, I love to think that Joe Paterno had done so many good things for not only yeah. that university, but just college football. And he made and a the, serious mistake. He did, and they took away they took Everything. away his statue, and they yeah. took away his name on the Big Ten Conference Championship game. They ripped that yep. away. Um, they put a bunch of sanctions on Penn State. The athletic director was fired. A uh, litany of coaches were thrown out. Um, and it, it was probably the, the biggest abuse game. And I remember listening to, there was a interview with Bob Costas, who's an, and he does most of the uh, Olympic analysts. He's the host of the Olympic Suits for NBC, for those who yeah. don't know. He had done an interview with Sandusky where it was him, Brian Williams, for some reason, and, uh, and Sandusky, and they had sat down on a telephone interview and they were talking, and Costas like pinned him against the wall and he was saying he's saying look these allegations are that you would take these boys in the shower and you would sexually you would sexually assault them um and he was like coaches have walked in on you before and they were too scared to say anything or too shocked at what they had seen to know what to do next what do you say that have you ever inappropriately touched or had sexual intercourse with a young boy or a boy under the age of 18 and Sandusky goes well I've wrestled in the shower with a lot of these young men, and if that's considered inappropriate, then I sincerely apologize. And I'm just sitting to myself, and I'm like, you sly motherfucker, you are just not you just not even remotely close to telling the entire truth. Like, well, just you know, want to save your ass. Um, I, and, you know, we, we talk about, you know, this scandal, too, and how much, you know, we're talking about sexual abuse scandals. I just wanted to add to that and talk, you know, this isn't the only sexual abuse scandal that happened in college sports. Oh, absolutely not. Because don't forget that in 2016, Larry Nasser got caught <laughs> molesting <laughs> Olympic oh, gymnasts in Michigan State. Yeah, and, this, and, and, and I just, I wanted to point that out because we're still running into this issue where colleges are mm-hmm. covering this up. Because yeah. you, there, there were reports all the way back into he did this all the way back until so the early, the early, early 2000, 2003. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, and you're telling me that, you know, they just now, they finally followed, Michigan State finally followed those complaints after right. like in 2016, um, 
a woman by the name of Rachel, Rachel Dinnenhollander. I don't yeah. know if I'm saying the last name right. Sorry, I'm you are, terrible. I, I, watched the, I watched the documentary uh, Athlete Eight, which was about this earlier today. And, and keep going, Desert. You know, it's just that. It, I don't know. It's just college has a lot of scandals in it, and it's just awful that we're not seeing change because right. this happened almost a decade after the Jerry Sandusky stuff. Sandusky issue, yeah. And, and the, the sad, it's the awful. Sad thing, it is awful, and the sad thing with it is this. And you can also you can also talk about like the sexual allegations, you know, with Mike Krzyzewski and his yeah. basketball players. You can talk about the Art Briles stuff at Baylor, but yeah. it's a great transition, I think, into this isn't this isn't just Michigan State. This no. is more on a whole level the United States Gym, Gymnastics Federation. Oh yeah, because they're awful. The the fact that they the fact that so basically what Nasser would do is he was for those who don't know he does have a full time job as a athletics doctor at the University of Michigan or Michigan State University correct but he was the team doctor for the women's gymnastics teams for the United States for about twenty years but to yep. twenty sixteen to it was like mid I think ninety six in Atlanta was his first year um, but basically what he would do is he would have these he would perform physicals quote unquote with the girls and he would be like oh you have an injury here on your thigh here let me do something more on essentially and he's like let me insert you know he's like vaginally let me go ahead and he like he would he would just he would start feeling these girls or he's like oh you have some problems with your glutes and he'd start you know he'd go in up the anus and uh you know he, he, he was like oh he's like oh you know you have chest compression uh, chest yeah chest, chest bruising yeah bruising or something like that like tits. like I mean, he's he's motherfucker is doing this to women younger than oh, And he drugged old. them too. Don't forget about that. Yeah. Don't because, forget about that. He would drug them beforehand because mm-hmm. he's a doctor and he'd give them some drugs because they're sore, blah blah blah, and that would haze their memory of it a lot of the times right. because he was mm-hmm. drugging them. Yeah. He, I mean, I was yeah. gonna say and Bill Cosby then, but that's terrible. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> not today. Not today. Um, so the girl that actually had the the first, well, not the first, but in 2015, there was she was a more high, higher profile case. In fact, she was what um, athlete A. It's a good Netflix documentary. I would highly recommend yeah. it for those of you that haven't seen it. Um, her name is Maggie Nichols, and she was actually considered one of the top five best overall gymnasts in the world, a little below Allie Ray Smith and Simone Biles. This is before mm-hmm. the Rio Olympics in 2016, where is that historic run we took all those gold medals? And yeah, I mean, so Simone she, Biles she, dominated. Absolutely dominated. Go Houston! Yeah. Go Houston! What's up, Texas Pride? No, um, <laughs> so... She, she, so this, this girl, Maggie Nichols, she comes in and she complains about Larry Nasser to mm-hmm. her coach, who then reports it to the president of, uh, excuse me, to the VP of U.S. Gymnastics. And the parents call in and they're like, look, my daughter is claiming all these sexual assault allegations against the guy that is, he's able to like be in a room with him by himself, have these, with these young women naked. And yep. What are you going to do about this? Like, you, you fire this guy, call the authorities. And so the president of U.S. Gymnastics, okay, his name was uh, Steve uh, uh, Steve Penn, excuse me. Uh, Steve Penn, he actually had come over to U.S. Gymnastics in 2014. Um, he was a sports marketing executive for U.S. Cycling for, like, eight years. Uh, and he was a big marketing guy, so all, only concerned about brand, image, and money. Yep. He comes in, he calls the parents of Nichols. And says, uh, we'd appreciate it if you didn't say anything about this to local authorities. Please let us handle this from within. We'll make yep. sure that Mr. Nasser is punished. Sure enough, what happens? Nasser doesn't get any punishment at all. They they cover it up and keep it quiet. They keep the tab- yep. keep it out of the tabloids. And the very next month, when they announce <coughs> the Olympic team, Maggie Nichols, one of the highest rated gymnasts in the world, is left off the women's Olympic team. Not even as a fucking reserve. She's yeah. completely off. One of the she best got left the off. And they, they leave her off because they didn't want her bringing any trouble to the pride of the gymnastics program. So yeah. obviously what her parents do, they go to the Indianapolis Star where this gigantic conspiracy is going on and uh, the U.S. Gymnastics headquarters is located. And they blow it up, you know. Um, so finally, like, I think they had a, a count of, like, 125 counts of women came out and they had said, yeah, like when I was 12, when I was 16, when I was 15, whatever, Nasser did this, this, and that, X, Y, and Z. Um, and I mean, yeah, he's currently serving uh, 30 years to life and with no possibility of parole. 
Um, yeah. I mean, am I, am I, I mean, I, I, I do think we but... should add, I'm not saying, let me, let me say, I'm not saying she didn't get left off the team because of what happened, but she did tear her meniscus in 2016. Right. But this was after so, the announcement had come out though. That's true. So uh, I was, what I'm saying is like, is guys, is this is the same thing. Like you can talk about Nasser and Sand. Nasser and Sandusky are the monsters. They're the predators. Yeah. But then you look at guys like Joe Pa or the, maybe not Joe Pa, the athletic director of Penn State, or this guy, mm-hmm. Steve Penny, who is the president of U.S. Gymnastics. It's the same thing with Goodell. They're, they're trying to keep all of this stuff bottled down so yep. it doesn't hurt profit margins. The so brand. it doesn't hurt the brand. Mm-hmm. And it's not okay. Like, there has to be no. accountability. I'm not a huge fan of HR in, like, in companies that don't think they stick their noses where they don't need to, but they yeah. do provide accountability in a lot of situations that wouldn't be provided if, you know, if the supervisor was the only church person in charge of, you know, that's another Well, I think that's the problem, but, right, is that we have people – at the very top of a lot of major companies, a lot of major organizations who are not very ethical. Right. Right. And for sure, all they think about is themselves money in the brand. They don't think about what it's doing to the people, what it's causing problems to those people. None of it. Right. And honestly, they should, you know, if you, I don't understand how you can keep something like that hidden and not see jail time. Yeah, I, I don't. Cur- currently, I, I know that Steve Penny. There are civil lawsuits against him, but he yeah, has but not currently been, had anything. He was um, charged with evidence tampering. Right. I mean, that's what because it's a couple of years, maybe you know, in some black white color prison. I mean, uh, it's, it's, and uh, the only thing I'm seeing is in an October 29th, 2018, he entered a plea of not guilty. I'm not yeah. seeing anything else after that. So I would I agree with you, and I would I would say that that's all. It's not, it, I wouldn't say it's as bad, but it's pretty damn close. It's pretty damn close to being on the same I mean, you didn't do the, the damn act, but you're, by not yeah, doing yeah. anything, you're yeah. agreeing with it. Yeah. You're if you, of, if you of, walk into a murder and you don't tell the police, you're part of the problem. You get charged is. with assisted murder. Like, yeah. you get charged for that. All right. You, think about you should that, be charged that's... for the, what you didn't. Joe Pa should have been charged. The president should have been charged. Right. All of everybody who has any information about something like that and doesn't right. say anything should be charged for something. Right. And, and I, it's and what's, what's really interesting, too, if you kind of a side note, if you haven't seen the video, there is one of the victim's fathers. Actually, I think you may have seen this. He's in the courtroom and Nasser mm-hmm. is a couple, couple feet away. And he's like. I would appreciate it if the court would allow me to have five minutes in a private room with this gentleman. Yeah. And the, everyone, you hear a light chuckle initially. Everyone's like, huh, okay. Like, yeah. He's just, and he's like, I'm serious. I'd like to have a five minutes on the judge is like, I understand your pain and anger, but that's not how we do things here. And he, he just loses it and he jumps over. Yep. The, he jumps over the fence and he tries to like grab NASA and beat the, the tar out I of mean, him. I don't know what I would do if I caught somebody doing that to my children uh, i don't i think it would. i mean it's outrageous I, it, it, it happened for so I, damn long mm-hmm. i think i mean we, i think it, we'd go it would go red or black for us and we would wake up and his his he would be bloody right next to us yeah and we would i mean the, the shit out of him. you know that's michaela maroney said that she was molested by him in 2008 when she was 13 years old he didn't get quote-unquote caught until june 17th right. 2015 Right. And like he didn't get he didn't get sexual misconduct charged until 2016, but right. he was caught in 2015. And I, I just I cannot believe that Michigan State or the uh, U.S. Gymnastics Authority didn't hear anything about him for that long. Right. They they they, they did. They yeah. Had like, their allegations, but they they kept it quiet. They put it's it just down. awful. It, it is awful, you know. Um, and I mean, I think there, there's other part with U.S. gymnastics where you know they uh, they're not a great organization. No, they're not. I mean, you know, they they brought those coaches over from Romania, and yeah. they just like they work the girls just to an insane level. To, yeah, I mean, it's just. I mean, there's a reason why we went gold, but yeah, that's true. You know, and there, there's a reason why you know China wins a lot of golds and yep. Russia as well because the and granted, I know these these athletes they sign up. And that's that's the sacrifice you make sometimes. But for the, the gymnastics program, a lot of these girls are signed up by their parents. Yeah, figure they're, skating they're too. Age. Figure skating, the same thing. They're all yep. underage. They're all under eighteen. Swimming. Uh, 
So let me just make this big one. Yeah. Yep. Um, so let's let's move on to our last one here because uh, okay. we're we're, yeah, we're coming there. up on time. Well, we'll we'll keep this one uh, very brief. Um, the last one was in. It, like the uh, Olympic, like the Olympic thing, uh, it was a international conspiracy with FIFA, and this came out in 2015. FIFA. 2015 yeah. was a bad 2015. year for sports. <laughs> yeah, what the <laughs> So, uh, so FIFA had corruption charges. Uh, apparently, there had been uh, tampering and money, uh, not money laundering, but bribes being placed. Oh yeah. By Host and not countries for the World Cup, no, big ones for host countries for the World Cup to the governing body of of FIFA. For those of you that don't know, FIFA is in control of the men's and women's uh, World Cup every four years, uh, and as well as the uh, uh, as well as they have interactions with the national tournaments being played in across every continent across the world. Um, so at the time. Uh, God, I think so. There was evidence that in tw- in the 2018 World Cup in Moscow and the 2022 World Cup in Qatar that there had been over a total of 150 million dollars given to members of FIFA's governing body yes. just in incentive, like just in presence and additional money. Some even had said there were prostitutes involved and drugs. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I, obviously, if the money's going to be involved, I'm sure the other stuff comes along with it. Correct. Um, to but, get their countries to host mm-hmm, the right, games. To have, right, to, exactly. And, I mean, you know, we... we so the, the, the gentleman that was in charge of this was... Uh, his name was uh, Seth Blatter. Okay, and Mr. Blatter had been the president of FIFA for almost 20... Uh, something in the 80s, essentially. Um, yeah. In 2015, he finally retired if you want to call it that due to a lack of leadership and turmoil within the organization that he claimed to be toxic when it's just bullshit he knew that the united states justice department and uh the government of switzerland where fifa's headquarters located in zurich uh they were coming after them and he didn't want to be uh, indicted and and extradited to the united states face jail time yeah so they all had gotten away um and apparently this gigantic scandal had been going on since bladder had actually become the president of fifa back in the 80s it was a big thing between all the it was a big thing between the governing body and the marketing executives of the world's largest sports marketing agencies that they basically i know that oh god who was hosting the world cup last time uh fox had it a long time ago and then NBC did. But basically, what FIFA would do is they would take like a four to eight year span, and they wouldn't allow anybody else to bid on the World Cup every year like they're supposed to. They would just continuously pick the main network that they had been picking for the previous mm-hmm. World Cup because they would be offering them more money in the back. You know, they'd be handing them money under the table, sending them gifts under the table. Um, and you know, it was, I was it was interesting. I was looking at the 2016 World Cup, or 2014 World Cup in Rio, and mm-hmm. apparently in Rio, it cost them $15 billion for the city itself, but $15 billion from the country of Brazil to get ready to build the actual stadiums, yep. to get all the hotels set up and the venues, and on top of that, FIFA still made a profit of $2.6 billion on top of that. Well, so, I know, can see that. Well, okay, the World I mean, Cup is huge. That? The World Cup is huge, but what I'm saying is there's been a lot of there's been a lot of negativity thrown at FIFA's way, saying that they are not shouldering enough of the load when it comes to helping get the com- the country set up. Like with the Olympics, there's they shouldn't have to. Or, they should absolutely have to. The amount of oh. money that they're going to get from tourist dollars and advertising through TV, absolutely, they should be putting money into it. Uh, think about there's how much money Brazil is. got. I don't remember how much they got. Uh, I know that FIFA was the one. Well, do we do we know that? I mean, let me see. I mean, you would have to. All the people that go there, all the media that go there, they're filling mm-hmm. their cities for however long those games are. I think but it's they a had month. They spent fifteen almost. billion to set everything up initially, so they were already in the hole. Well, that's Brazil's fault. They when when you say I want the World Cup to come to my country, you have to pay the price tag of the World Cup coming to your country. The United States got it. We're not going to have to spend $15 billion because we mm-hmm. have the infrastructure already set up to do this. Yeah. I mean, if you can't, if you don't have the infrastructure to, to set it up to do it or the money to do it, then you shouldn't be saying you want to do it. You shouldn't say, hey, I can do this. Raise your hand. I can do this. No, you can't. Yeah. 
So it's it. So it says FIFA offers to give any country. Well, currently, or recently, they've given usually about a hundred million dollars to the cause. Mm-hmm. Okay, but the higher percentage of all advertising and marketing dollars, which counts like distribution for fan merchandise and you know obviously airtime and stuff like that, goes to FIFA. It, it's, yeah. it's being funneled back into Brazil. So they're they're. I, the amount of money they're taking from the tourist dollars is probably a lot, but the hole they've already dug themselves, I think that percentage should be split up more fairly between FIFA and then but, the country hosting because they're taking on all the risk. Yeah, but they're agreeing to that risk when they say they they want to I, I know they're t- t- I'm, bring the I'm World Cup. I'm saying they're not getting enough. Oh, I'm saying they're not getting enough. I, these, uh, these, honestly, countries these, like Brazil and where's the next one? Qatar? Which yeah, is it literally has Qatar slave Qatar. labor going on right but, now to build. And that, that's the thing. And that is so we, they we shouldn't be given Qatar. these things. They should not I, be given the World Cup because they can't host the World Cup. Like, well, they, they, can, they, can, they can host it. It's just I, I think the percentage should be split up a little more evenly because of how much work the countries are doing. To See, like the Olympics, when the winter, when the winter and summer Olympics come around, I know that for I know for a fact that it's almost a complete 50-50 split between the Olympic Committee itself and then the actual country hosting for the actual profits coming in. Yeah. That's the thing. You know, so but that's like a worldwide like, thing. I mean, I understand so, so is FIFA, though. but it's yeah. not like the Olympics. Yeah, but it, but in it's fact, a business. It shows, the Men's World Cup has more overall views than the Summer Olympics and Super yeah. Bowl combined on, yeah. one, on just one watch. I, like, I completely insane. understand that. Yeah. I'm just saying FIFA's a business. It's not – the Olympics isn't really a business. They're both a business. They're both I not mean, profit organizations. What do you mean? I don't know. FIFA is 100% for profit. They're actually not for profit. Well, let me put it this way. They, they are, I agree. They are, they are for profit. <laughs> they, they claim on their website a not-for-profit organization. So, I mean, well, you know, take that for what you will, I guess. Um, okay, FIFA. Yeah, I mean, okay, FIFA. That's my sure. response to that. Okay, okay FIFA. FIFA. But back to the thing you talked about with the slave labor in Qatar, that's that's interesting you pull, put, point that out because that's totally accurate. They were saying yeah. that by the end of the building of all the stadiums, because remember, they're going to be, it gets up to about 120, 130 degrees during the day in a summer in Qatar in particular. Yeah. And so they're saying an estimated 4,000 workers are going to die before the start of the 2022, yeah. just, just, just working in the hot sun and falling off the scaffoldings and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, because, because they don't care about the workers. Yeah. And <laughs> they're they slaves. Are, the, 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 the slaves, indentured servants, whatever they're bringing in from other countries, they hold their passports. Like the government yeah. is holding their passports so they can't leave until they're done. Yeah, um, they're they're actual right slaves. Out. Yeah. Um, and I don't know how much they're getting paid, if anything, um, to do that. But I'm sure, they, I'm sure they're getting something otherwise. Well, who knows? FIFA may not hold that. Who knows? Um, so far on record, no host country has ever lost their actual their actual bid to do it. So they domestic, offered domestic. her, they offered somebody 7,000 Qatari riles, which is $1,500. 1,500 pounds. To what? To build the stadium. That's it? They earn 35 pounds a week. Jesus, that's horrible. Yeah, and this is, but this is what my point is. Countries like this should not be given the World Cup. Sure, I could, I could, I could, like, I could agree with that for sure. I understand, you know, we want this. This is gonna. I understand in a perfect world, all countries should be able to have the Olympics and have the World Cup and everything like that, but we're not a perfect world. There's some countries that are a little bit behind other countries. It's just a statistical fact. And those countries that are behind those other countries, FIFA shouldn't have to prop up. Right. And Qatar bribed FIFA to get the World Cup. Yeah, a lot of money. (laughs) (laughs) And when when, when, uh, Sup there, the old president, when he was running for president again for his fifth term, he was actually facing. I, yeah, I don't remember if he was won. The of Qatar, and he did win because the other guy dropped out. Yeah. And I think, and I'm assuming, and I'm, my guess is that it was because he was. He was impeached. Set Blatter was impeached. He was impeached. Right. This, president, was a couple, but this was a couple years prior to that. Yeah. Yes. When they were actually running the re-election. Um, he got I, reelected I, somehow. Yeah. Yeah. Domestically, internationally. <laughs> 
there's there's so much, and you know, I mean, we I I'd love to get to the NBA another for another day. I mean, yeah, we can talk the, about the all Tim, that. The Tim Donaghy, where he was, you know, he he claimed. Remember when uh, the Kings and the Lakers were fighting in the O one Conference Finals, and it was yeah. like Game Six, and they had like fifteen fouls called on them in seven minutes, and Donaghy comes out and he goes, look. David Stern, the commissioner, then he knew that the Lakers had the highest rating of any team on the yep. planet because they had Shaq and Kobe. And if they weren't going to the championship, then who's going to watch a finals between the Sacramento Kings and the New Jersey Nets? Like, Me. You know, I mean, I, I would, but not a lot of people. Go see uh, with, dude. <laughs> I love C Web, man. I love Mike Bibby. Like, love yeah, Bibby. Mike Bibby, dude. <laughs> um, anyways, and that was with Jason Kidd, too. There's the good old days. The good old days of basketball, dude. Uh, anyways, guys, that is Story That's unfortunately all the time we got for uh, There's No Crying Podcast today. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, once again, I'm Johnny Blackburn. Nick Alessandro. All right, you guys stay safe. Have a good one.